We have one more article for today. Intel announces Bitcoin mining initiative, Bonanza mine chips and ships this year. Let's get into it. It's coming from Tom's Hardware. Intel has officially entered the crypto mining business. Intel's Raja Kaduri penned a blog post that officially announces the company's plans to enter the crypto mining blockchain market with a roadmap of specialized energy efficient accelerators. Intel will begin delivering the new chips comprised of the Bonanza mining, mine ASICs that we recently unearthed this year to several large customers as it enters the Bitcoin mining market that it expects to grow by $2.8 billion from 2021 to 2025. Intel's first customers include Block, formerly known as Square and held by CEO Jack Dorsey of Twitter fame. Now this one's interesting because remember I thought we were going to be seeing ASIC miners from Block themselves as well. That doesn't, I'm, I'm wondering if that means this isn't the case anymore. It seems like Jack Dorsey's just gonna be working off of Intel's miners for Block, but I could be wrong. There was, you know, initial rumors that Block itself was working on ASIC miners themselves. Argo blockchain and grid infrastructure are the other ones. We'll provide a bit more detail on those relationships below. Intel has announced that it had created a new custom compute group folded under Kaduri's Accelerated Computing and Graphics AXG business unit to design and build its blockchain hardware. The group will also build other unspecified custom accelerated supercomputing hardware based on Intel's existing IP blocks. It's unclear if these products could address other types of cryptocurrency mining or if the unit will also serve as an adjunct to Intel Foundry Services, IFS. Intel shared an image of its new blockchain accelerator, but Kaduri's missive, uh, Missive is light on technical details. However, we already know quite a bit about the company's upcoming Bitcoin mining hardware. We first discovered Intel's Bonanza mine chips in a listing for a presentation at the upcoming ISSCC conference, but the company has already moved on to its second gen Bonanza mine ASIC known as BMZ2. This chip has special, specialized architecture designed specifically to accelerate SHA-256 processing for Bitcoin mining at ultra low voltage. We talked about this uh, a few weeks ago. These energy efficient chips produce what Intel characterizes as over a thousand times better performance per watt than mainstream GPUs for SHA-256 based mining. Well, yeah, I, I, would, I would hope so. But how does it compare to current ASIC miners, right? However, GPUs aren't, yeah, so they say that here. Instead, Bitcoin is used with ASICs, blah, blah, blah. Intel's Bonanza mine will compete with other ASIC-based devices from companies like Bitmain and MicroBT. These companies suffer from long lead times and charge prohibitively high pricing, often based on Bitcoin's valuation for their chips. They also have to rely on third-party design houses and uh, foundries for manufacturing. Foundries like TSMC don't tend to give these companies pre preferential status in their fabs due to the uncertainty of the demand and sporadic nature of crypto mining. Instead, they prioritize longer term steady business from bigger chip designers. Intel has tremendous production capacity of its own, but it's, it isn't clear if it will fab the BMZ 2A6 in its own internal fabs or outsource production to TSMC. <clears throat> it does say that, B I got a little frog in my throat. Hold on guys, long show. All right, too much food yesterday, too much dairy food, like the dips and stuff, no good. All right, so it does say the BMZ2 is rumored to use TSMC's five nanometer manufacturing process. 
However, Intel has traditionally outsourced roughly 25% of its silicon production and will drastically increase that amount over the next few years as it moves its GPU and some CPU production to TSMC, meaning it has more purchasing power than competing mining hardware firms. Additionally, Intel it has tight control over its supply chain and has its own production, including packaging and test OSAT capacity a critical step in the manufacturing process that has proven to be one of the major contributors behind the ongoing semiconductor shortages. Intel says that its, its mining hardware consists of tiny pieces of silicon. The first gen BMZ1 chip measures uh, a mere 14.2 millimeters squared. So this new foray shouldn't impact its supply of current products. However, much like you can see in the image, half of Bitmain's S19 hash board above, mining ASICs are deployed in mass. So we expect Intel's solution will have a similar arrangement. So it will consume a non-trivial amount of silicon in aggregate. However, the smaller die size boost yields up and maximizes wafer area usage up to 4,000 die per wafer, thus helping maximize production capacity. So here's the big ones that I kind of was curious on, which was the first customers. Uh, like I said, the first one here, Block, is interesting because I thought Block themselves were working on their own ASIC. I wonder if there's kind of like a, a kind of tells me that that's probably not the case anymore. Intel has announced three of its first customers, Block, formerly known as Square, Argo Blockchain, and Grid Infrastructure. But it's possible that the company has other large customers that wish to remain unnamed. The Bitcoin mining industry has been plagued by hardware shortages and excessive pricing for the last few years. Considering that analysts predict 1.5 to 2 million Bitcoin miners will ship this year, that will likely continue. As such, Intel could prove to be a disruptive force in the market segment given its scale, more predictable pricing, and likely more predictable supply. We can see some of these aspects come into play with Intel's deal with its first publicly known customer, Grid Computing, which will soon go public at an estimated $3.3 billion valuation. Intel has guaranteed Grid that it will sell it a minimum of 25% of its overall mining ASIC supply through 2025 at fixed pricing until 2023. And this is where it's getting... Um, for me, as like a home miner, especially as a GPU miner, starting out very small and then building up and, you know, taking this process, making this YouTube channel, becoming, you know, somewhat financially independent as far as not having to have a job or a day job. Um, when I see stuff like this, I see like a, a removal of the opportunity for the general public. Uh, when you see 25% of all the production being guaranteed to go to a large $3.3 billion business and the fact that like the point of cryptocurrency is to distribute that hardware out to more people, uh, like this kind of stuff is just super disappointing to me because I also want to see other people be able to do what I did and start off small with the GPUs and build up and build out their farm. <clears throat> but at this point, it's such large business that it just that doesn't seem, at least from the Bitcoin mining perspective, that doesn't even seem viable. And even in my position where I'm at now, I don't think I don't see how I could ever compete with something like Grid, um, and or even survive with them on the market at all, right? Like, how am I supposed to obtain these competitive miners? So it's kind of hard. They do say this is a far more desirable than fluctuating price from competing firms like Bitcoin that assign pricing based on Bitcoin valu valuation, uh, which is true. Like at least there's an improvement there where the miners are at a fixed price. Uh, it's still super disappointing though, because like the general consumer is probably not going to get any of these. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.